If this is the first time we met, my name is Chris, and on this channel we discuss emergency preparedness, aka prepping. Jackery recently sent me their new 2000 Pro model to test it out and to review it. And I've reviewed their 1000, their 1500, and their original 2000 models in the past. And this one, in my opinion, is a big step up in a few key ways. And I'll tell you up front that this new model, it has some unique features which honestly impress me, something that we'll cover momentarily. And in this video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cover the following. We'll go over the primary specs and features of this model. We'll run it through various tests showing the DC and AC efficiency, pure sine wave capability. And we're also gonna look at the solar charging capabilities. We'll show how it stacks up against the competition. We'll try to answer the question, is this the right fit for the preparedness community? And I'll disclose how I get paid for these videos. And I do this because I think it's important that you understand this to determine my motivation for covering this product on my channel. And at the very end, I'll give my final thoughts on this unit. So let's go ahead and start off with some of the features and the specs. The first thing you'll notice in comparison to the previous models is a redesign. Now, in the previous models, the handle, it stuck out on the top, making it very difficult to stack anything on top of this. But with the new design, the handle can actually be lifted and put away, which, in my opinion, is a great fix for just a practical use. Now, regarding the capacity, this will hold 2,160 watt hours. As we've discussed before, this value indicates how much power this device stores. For example, this laptop charger here in front of me uses 60 watts to power my laptop that's here out of frame. And if I were to use my laptop nonstop, charging it from the Jackery 2000, I could expect about 36 hours of charge time from the Jackery's battery. Now, it doesn't exactly come to 36 hours due to efficiency issues, which we'll discuss in a moment. But if you get this basic concept of understanding kilowatt hours and actual usage and how that math works out, you're gonna be able to understand what this device is capable of. Of course, people will ask, well, how long will it charge my refrigerator or my CPAP machine or you name it? I'll post a link at the bottom in the description section to my solar generator guide, which has a calculator. And I'll populate the information from the Jackery 2000 Pro in that document. And you can select which devices you wanna power and it will show how long the Jackery can power those devices. Regarding AC output capability, it can handle 2200 watts continuous in a surge of 4400 watts. So what do these numbers mean? 2200, 4400, what does that tell us? If I were operating several devices at once, let's say a hair dryer and an induction cooking plate like the one I have here in front of me, let's just say together these pull 2200 watts, which more or less they do. This device could actually power both of these devices. Now, regarding surge, when you start some devices that have motors, let's say, for example, a fan or your refrigerator, the motor, it actually has to spin up from resting. And in this case, the wattage being pulled, what it does is it surges for a moment while that device is getting up and running, and then it will drop down to a continuous va a value after the motor or whatever it is actually gets moving. And this is referred to as surge, and this device can actually handle up to 4,400 watts of surge. These devices I've referred to a lot of times will have that information on the manufacturer's website. Again, information that you can plug into the calculator. The next value that we're gonna look at is a solar charging capability. And this is where this particular device, it really stands out, which I'll discuss momentarily in the testing section. It's designed to handle 1200 watts of solar input. And on the back, it has two MPPT charging inputs that you have to connect through their specific adapters, allowing you to connect three panels to each adapter for a total of six of their 200 watt panels. According to their specs, you can charge this in two hours from an AC plug-in. The noise this unit produces is 53 decibel and the weight comes in at 43 pounds. The battery technology it uses is lithium ion. And lithium ion is popular for its lightweight, but more companies are beginning to offer lithium iron phosphate, which has nearly seven times the charging capability. Jackery, they really target the off-roading community, so being lightweight is an important factor which is reflected in their selection of the particular battery technology that they use on this. The device is also capable of pass-through charging, which means that if you had this plugged into either an AC outlet or solar panels, you could power a device plugged into the Jackery at the same time. And they also offer a five-year warranty if you purchase this directly through their website, which is quite honestly one of the higher warranties that I've seen on the market. 
Okay, so now that we've run through the specs, let's see how this device actually performs under various tests. To test the DC output efficiency, I use a simple device that allows me to put a load on the Jackery and then it records the total output after the Jackery is drained from 100% down to 0%. After testing, I was able to get a total of 1,690 watts over the course of 18 hours and 49 minutes. That efficiency for DC comes out to 78%. Regarding the charge time via an AC wall plug-in, it charges at about 1,540 watts for the first 80%, and then for the last 20% remaining, it slows down a bit. This is also known as the stadium effect. And if you are charging from 0%, you could effectively charge this in about two hours. Regarding the AC efficiency, what I do is I put the battery under a 75% load. Since it is capable of outputting 2,200 watts continuously, a 75% load would be 1,650 watts continuously. I used a heat gun and a hair dryer. You may ask why I use these devices as in a disaster situation. These wouldn't necessarily be a high priority. The answer is that with these devices, I can actually control the output to keep the load at 75% continuously for testing purposes. It kind of gives me a strong baseline that I can work off of. In a real life scenario, if you are powering several things at once, let's say, a refrigerator, a CPAP machine, a box fan, a laptop, and a small portable air conditioner, you could actually easily hit around 1600 watts, which is the testing value that I'm showing here. So don't let these devices I'm using confuse you. Again, refer to the capability calculator, which I'll post a link to below. That will allow you to select the devices that you'd like to use after disaster. And once you add them all up, you'll quickly see if this device can handle that load. So under a 75% load, I was able to output a total of 1,780 watts shown here using a simple kilowatt meter giving me an efficiency of 82%. For the pure sine wave test, I used an oscilloscope and I tested the AC output while I put this device under four different loads. Sensitive electrical devices, they typically need a pure sine wave to perform properly and without it, some devices may be damaged while other devices are typically more forgiving. At 0% load, I got a pure sine wave. At 50, 75, and 100%, the sine wave was nearly perfect, and I say nearly. I was on the fence as to whether or not to declare these values as a pure sine wave value. And ultimately, I opted for yes, simply because out of all of the other solar generators I reviewed in the last few years, the deviation from a pure sine wave was so minuscule for this device in comparison to the other ones I've tested. So I'll leave that up to you to decide whether you want to declare that as a pure sine wave or not. For solar input capability, this is where things really got interesting. As shown here during testing, I was able to get 1,007 watts of input. And this is an impressive amount for a device of this size. I hooked up six of their Solar Sega 200 watt solar panels, and with the sun fully overhead, I was able to get close to the maximum input for this device. And this is the first time during testing any of these particular devices that I was able to hit this high of a number. And it's worth noting that the sun was directly overhead and the condition was right to really maximize the solar charging for this. For someone in the preparedness community, getting this ability from solar could be a game changer, which we'll talk about momentarily. In regards to how it compares to the other options on the market, let's run through the numbers. As shown in the spreadsheet, which I'll again link to below, you can compare this unit to the other devices that I've tested. You can sort the columns to see where it stands for various values. For example, for the cost, it's one of the more expensive, but for capacity, it's amongst the highest. For cost per watt hour, it's about average. For AC efficiency, it's slightly low. And for DC efficiency, it's about average. For continuous and peak output, it's on the high side. And for solar max input, it has the highest value. Again, I'll link to the spreadsheet to allow you to really play around with these values. For someone in this community, various values are more important, which is why I'll give you the numbers and really leave it up to you to ultimately decide what are your priorities to determine whether this stands out in comparison to the other options on the market. And I'll give you my two cents at the end of this video. Jackery primarily targets the outdoor van life Jeep overlanding community. And I personally enjoy overlanding with my Jeep and having one of these devices does come in handy for powering electronics when I'm out for an extended period of time. But is this a right fit for the emergency preparedness, AKA prepping community? 
I would say yes, more so than their smaller units. The fact that you can get so much power from charging with solar in such a small portable device, it really has gotten my attention. I get approached nonstop by various companies that want me to review these type of devices who are normally willing to pay very well. And I've declined all but a handful of companies as I really wanna showcase the companies that have the longest history, availability, and a solid reputation. And Jackery really checks all these boxes. The primary selling point of this unit is the portability aspect. For those that want a solid bug out option and want to be able to charge it quickly, it will definitely handle this. And for those that are also preparing for potential rolling blackouts this summer due to the potential high energy demands and high temperatures, this will, in my opinion, also be a great option. While I have a whole home battery backup system installed in my house attached to solar panels on my roof, if I didn't have that set up, this device could power some of the core essential items such as my refrigerator, uh, phones, laptop, portable AC, and my Starlink internet service. I'm going to probably start adding this segment to my videos moving forward for some of the higher ticket items as I think transparency is really key when we review these type of products. As I stated earlier, I get approached nonstop by companies that are willing to pay very well to have their product promoted on my channel. And I don't do paid promotions really anymore. I had sponsors in the past, but I've started moving away from that model. For most all the companies that I work with, I do charge an upfront production fee, which covers my filming and editing costs, which I don't really consider a promotion fee per se. From there, the company will send me their product and after I've tested it, if it meets my standards, I'll move forward with the review. Otherwise, what I'll do is I'll just package it up, ship it back, which actually has happened a few times in the past. I get an affiliate link from the company and I get paid for the sale of each of the products that people buy. Afterwards, what I normally do with these is I either give them to a friend here locally or a family that I'm trying to help prepare, or sometimes I do giveaways on my channel. I've only really kept a few of these products for personal use and this falls into that category. And I never sell them on eBay or Craigslist. Again, I just try to give them away to help other people. Overall, I think Jackery has had a decent lineup for several years. And this unit, in my opinion, really stands out from their previous offerings, primarily due to their solar charging capabilities, which honestly surprised me during testing. Why was it a surprise? You'll often see the specs from the companies and during testing, you're lucky to get as close to the actual value stated by the manufacturer. And that wasn't the case with this particular unit. Coming in at a little over 1000 watts of solar input, with 1200 watts of panels, I found this to be very impressive. With the potential for energy grid problems in the coming years due to the reasons we've covered several times on this channel, I think more and more people will be looking for devices like this that can power essential items that they don't wanna draw unwanted attention to during operation, are easy to transport, don't need a fuel source such as gasoline or propane, and can technically run indefinitely as long as you have the sun. My only issue with the Jackery models is their proprietary eight millimeter plug-in, which can make plugging in other third-party solar panels a bit more difficult as possible, but they don't make it easy. But if I were to look at this from another angle, one could argue that this is one of the main strengths of this unit and that they have the panels lined up that work well with this unit. So you're effectively buying a plug and play model. While I wouldn't necessarily call myself an Apple fanboy, I do like their devices as they just kind of all work together very well out of the box. There's not a lot of configuration. They just plug in, they go, and they all work together well in their kind of uh, ecosystem. And there's no guesswork or configurations. They, again, just work. And I feel like Jackery has used kind of a similar approach. For individuals that want a higher degree of control, you may find their setup a bit limiting. Hopefully this video though gives you enough information to really help you determine whether this is the right unit for you or not. Again, I'll link to the spreadsheet below. And once you begin to play around with those values and compare to other models, I think it's gonna give you a good understanding if this is a good fit for you. You'll be directed to a sign up page when you click on the link and after signing up, you'll get access to everything that I covered. I would highly encourage you to watch my solar generator guide for 2022, which I'll post a link to up in the cards above and on the end screen. After you watch that video, it's a bit long, but there's a lot of information in there. You're gonna understand this model even better. As always, stay safe out there.